Hello guys, welcome back to the Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the base shear and the earthquake engineering. So we will be talking about the base shear concept and the earthquake or the seismic engineering. So first of all, to define the base shear. The definition of the base shear is that the base shear is the maximum lateral or the sideways force that will occur due to the seismic ground motion and at the base of the structure right at the base of the structure so let's consider this is my building and having only a single bay bay means that it is only one side horizontal side by direction one bay but it have different floors right a simple building and we are going we, i'm just taking this an example to explain the base shear concept so this definition shows it means that it is the maximum lateral force sidewise force sidewise means it applied and the oh, sideways direction to this is called the lateral force that will occur due to the seismic ground motion due to the earthquake there will be the lateral force occurring at the base of the structure so this force is known as the base shear so due to the earthquake for example the loads coming on this side of the building for example the loads coming on this side of the building so there will be the some maximum lateral force produced due to the uh, due to the forces on each story of the of this building so this maximum lateral force produced due to the seismic ground motion due to the ground motion of the structure is known as the base shear so this is i call as the base shear and this base shear is usually represented by capital v right base shear v now we will we will we will draw here a method how to find the base shear right so let's suppose the base shear the total design base shear the formula for the total design base shear right first of all what we do we find the total design base shear for the building and then we this design base shear we split into different number of floors right according to the different floors we divide this force into numbers of the stories right so the maximum lateral force is applied at the top of the building it will experience the maximum lateral force and then decreasing in the order and summation of these all story forces is equal to the this base shear so we design the base shear and then we split this shear into various floors so i will also show you the method how we divide this uh, the force into the various uh, stories of the floor of the building so total design base shear can be found out by this formula that v is equal to the v is the base shear and is equal to the cv into i into r into t and then whole multiplied with the w so w right so now what is c the base shear formula is this and we want to know about each of these factors so cv cv is known as the cv is known as the seismic coefficient right seismic coefficient and it depends on the soil profile what type of soil is there under your building and what type of zone it depends on two types two things one is soil type and one is seismic zone like what type of zone your building is situated in it may be higher zone seismic zone or lower seismic zone so according to that you will find this seismic coefficient value uh, there is a table uh, and this table is a uh, table 16 r of ubc 97 universal building 97 code so you will find the table 16 r of that a universal building code you will find the seismic coefficient for different types of the soil and for different seismic zone you should find this value and will put into this equation right and i i is importance factor of the building seismic importance factor seismic importance factor it means that how much your building is vulnerable and it is important uh, in design importance factor for example your hospital is his high seismic importance factor while your residential building have a low importance factor so according to that you will put the value into the uh, this equation where i is the seismic importance coefficient uh, r is the response modification factor right r is the response seismic response modification factor and it also depends on your type of the building modification factor right 
It depends on your type of the building. Uh, like it may be the steel building, it may be the concrete uh, building or machinery type of building. So according to that, you will use the value and uh, you will put and you will um, find a table in the UBC and will put the value into this equation to find the base shear. Now the uh, the T T is the time period of the structure. T is the uh, seismic time period of structure, right? Seismic time period, or can call it the simple the time period of the structure of your building, which you are going to design for the base shear. So where W is the total weight of the structure, total W is equal to the total dead load of the structure, dead load of structure, right? Uh, means you have different loads in this floor and then this floor and this floor have different loads, dead load and adding all these loads you will get the total dead load of the structure is W. So by putting all these value from the table or from the calculation you have to put all these value into this equation and then you will find that how much base shear you are required to design for the building. Each building have different base shear design because it may have different condition of the soil type, it may have different of the zone type and it may have different the R factor and the potency factor. It may have different dead load of the structure. So according to that, we have different base shear for different type of the structures. And the more vulnerable structure, the more important structure, we have greater base shear. And according to that, we design our building more seismically, right? So this is the way how to find the base shear, uh, the, total, uh, the total horizontal force which occur at the base of the structure is known as the base shear. Now, this base shear, we split this base shear into different type of forces like F1 here, first floor, second floor, floor, third floor force, and a four like a five. So a five will experience the maximum force and combining this F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, these all will be equal to the summation of forces will all be equal to the base shear because we split this base shear into the uh, individual type, individual floor storage forces. Now, how to find the individual forces? So I'm, uh, right, I'm going to write a simple formula which is used to find the individual, individual forces on each story. To find the individual story forces, this formula is generally used if x is equal to the v total base shear minus ft and wx into hx divided by the summation of wi into hi. So this formula is used to find the force of the individual uh, individual story, right? How much lateral force acting on the individual story. So let's suppose I'm finding the F1, how much force will be acting on the first story. So you can write it here, X is equal to one here, and then base here, the total base here here I found by the previous formula. For example, I find maybe the 312 kips, right? Kilo pound I found out, so I will put this base here, here minus FT is the additional force for each story and generally this value is taken zero for the low buildings while for high rise buildings you should take this value according to the table and WX is the weight of each floor for example the weight of this floor is uh, 10 kips 10 kips right so I will write it 10 and the height of this building from the bottom is uh, let's suppose it is 5 foot so I will put the 5 here and then dividing by this summation of total WI into HI. W HI means the total height, uh, uh, the, sum the H I is the H1, H2 here, and then H3, and then H4, and then H5. So respectively, you should multiply the weight of each floor with the height of each floor, and then taking the summation, you will find the total value, and dividing this total value here by this uh, equation, you will get the F1 force, right? So in this case, let's suppose F1 is uh, 20 kips, right? So if I will write it here that F1 is equal to the 20 kips, then you should find the F2 by this method. How? Just by putting the same value, uh, putting the value of W2 here, that how much weight of the second floor is, and then height of the second floor is maybe 10 meter, 10 foot. So you will put 10 here, and uh, this will be the same for each, uh, for this building. So again, we will find F2 here, F2 maybe 40, maybe 40 here, and then 60, and then 80, and maybe increasing order. But the summation of all these forces should must be equal to the base shear which we find out by the previous formula. So this is known as the base shear in earthquake engineering. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say about this concept uh, which is used in the earthquake engineering. 
and, and uh, every building is designed for the base shear because it is very important to know about this concept uh, in earthquake engineering. And one thing please, that don't forget to subscribe my channel and please share my videos with your colleagues. Thank you for watching my video.